So we're now going to have a fireside chat with myself and Ayuna. Um, and you've got the table mic there. Hi everyone. Uh, it's the last session before the great, uh, uh, the great um, uh, drink reception. Uh, so David and I are going to uh, keep you entertained. It's not going to be as, as intensive, as intense as this, uh, as it has been throughout the day. But at the same time, I hope that we will be able to provide some additional insights. Uh, so my name is Ayuna Nichaeva. I'm head of Europe, primary markets uh, of the London Stock Exchange Group. I'm also co-chair of our Women Inspired Network uh, in the UK. And I've been with LSEG for uh, over 12 years now. And um, I'm really, it's one of those events uh, and one of those, you know, big projects. Uh, I think it's more than an event, right? Um, where it's so amazing and inspirational to see a huge diversity of talent female talent in the room, but also the male allies and also investors. So with that, I want, uh, we will have a fireside chat. So a couple of questions from David to me, but actually a couple of questions from me to, to David. So, um, so I'll kick off. Uh, so in your opinion, what were the main takeaways from, from today for you? From today? Um, I mean, there's been so much and it's, it's, you know, it'll it'll take me time to 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 process all of it. But I think I think the key things for me, um, I loved Jane's stories and passion and belief, and the fact that she just stayed focused on that. And when you know when that investor came along and said, "Oh, let's turn this into a data thing, and and we'll we'll sell the data to big pharma," and that was just so absolutely not aligned with Jane's values, and, and she just said no, and, and gone. And thinking about what, what Ishveen and others have said, you know, if that was the first time someone was coming offering you money, and here's the check, but it doesn't align with your values, you've got to stick hard with your values and, and say no. And one of, one of the uh, women that I interviewed um, in, in, in my second book, which will be coming out later this year, um, she turned down funding three separate times before she found the right funder. And she just bootstrapped it and figured out and did deals and all of that. So, so make sure that your investor is aligned. I think that's critical. Um, what Olivia was talking about in terms of keeping that mental uh, strength and also having the ability to recognize you're going through something that's really challenging. It's really hard work. It's mentally challenging. It's physically challenging. It's emotionally brutal, and you're doing that on top of your job of, as, as running a business. And, and you need to just understand that and, you know, find people like Olivia or, or, or have a best friend in your network. Have someone that you can just open up to and let that pressure out because you can't keep it all in yourself or you're just going to explode. Um, then if we come on to... Um, Bente, I, I loved Bente's story and, and, you know, just the strength and carrying on and, and the ability, as, as she said, you know, she had a revenue stream, so it wasn't like she was desperate. Don't be desperate. Even if you are desperate, please don't indicate in any way, shape or form that you're desperate. You've got to be confident going in there. Sort of, oh, please, I need your money. You're dead before you even get in the room. So, so hold that confidence, hold that belief. And as Bente said, and it's been touched on a bit before, you know, part of the reason for raising money is to enable you to go out and find the CTO who's thinking about going and getting a job at Google or finding the logistics manager or finding the head of operations or finding the head of sales and marketing that you need to take your company to the next level. That's part of why you're bringing in that money. And that's one of the biggest thought shifts that you need to address when you go from being a bootstrap business or a friends and family business to being an invested in business, because the cash is there to enable you to build and scale your company. And I've, I've seen so many companies grow up and they get to kind of a point where they're bootstrapped. And it's usually around the million pound sales in Mark. It might be 800 grand. It might be 1.5, depending on the industry, but it's around a million. And at that stage, to grow your business then to five, 
You need to change the structure of your business. You can't be the one making all the decisions. And so that was a key learning from, from what Bente said, where she's absolutely going to invest. And, and yeah, just, I, I mean, there's so much more. I could probably talk for 20 minutes. I want to add, actually, to yes. that. I was inspired by something that you, Sarah, said. And I know we've, because we spoke before, we are aligned. You know, stop fixing women. Yeah, stop fixing yeah. founders. And oh. uh, what are the things that we need to be, how we should be, you know, all of that. No. Yeah, there are certain steps and issue, you know, has been, you know, so amazing explaining some of the tips and do's and don'ts in terms of the actual fundraising, but it's not about us and it's not about how we present ourselves. It's not about our behavior. So that's for me is really important. It, it is. And there was a great yeah. article that came out. I can't remember where I, I've got loads of articles. Uh, it came out about two weeks ago and the title was women don't need more mentoring. They need yeah. money. No, 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 exactly. Yes, yeah. yes. We don't yes. need more empowerment. Yeah, we no, don't exactly. Need cash. Exactly. Yeah. Just give me the yeah. goddamn money. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And um, do you want me to ask me a question, or shall I? Sure. Okay. So you're the co-chair of the Women in yes. Women Inspired Network. How can our audience tap into what you're doing with Win? Ah, uh, thank you, Dave. Um, the the main thing, and I think it's a continuation of what we already started to talk about, is is not about um, it's not about fixing women. And you know, I've I've been in my career to so many workshops on how to become more confident and all of that, which is hugely like I mean, it, it is helpful to a degree, but uh, uh, but what I find uh, really important is to actually do uh, focus on policy. And it actually, it's, it's at corporate level, but actually everywhere, focus, uh, focus on policy. So how are you hiring? You know, again, one of the things that, um, that really annoyed me when I was at the Institute of Independent Directors, you know, at Palmal, and, you know, there were like all gray, gray hair chairmen sat there and they were talking about how they would hire for boards. It was seven, eight years ago, the best candidate. They, so they don't care what gender it is, but they will hire the best candidate in their opinion. And obviously, you, you remember what the boards look like. Um, so, so really having this very strong policies around hiring, promoting career development. So we're focusing on that, and we're working very closely with our with our talent development team and career development team with, uh, on that. Uh, providing not just mentoring, but peer to peer. Uh, it's not even mentoring, but it's peer to peer group. Um, Discussions, you know, where we talk about, our, you know, situations where how and we coach each other, and of course, coaching and sponsorship. So sponsorship is super important. So uh, in male-dominated industries, uh, sponsorship happens automatically because you know, younger, you know, when there is a male figure at the top, you know, they tap, you know, talent, and they mm -hmm. say, "I'll take this guy with me," you know, into my next company, or you know, I give this, and that doesn't happen as naturally for women, a because there aren't enough. Uh, senior female figures, and B, it's just naturally, you know, it's not there yet. So sponsorship is important. And third, we, of course, we, we focus on the funding piece. So I, in my actually day job, uh, uh, I deal with IPOs and listings and, you know, fundraising through the public markets. But then uh, that actually translates really well because, you know, I, myself and my team are very, you know, really understand the whole funding continuum. So... Uh, we also now, as, as I mentioned, focusing a lot on the private markets. And Julia Hoggett is the biggest champion. So she's, uh, she's always about the cold hard cash. So how can the people in this audience tap in to win? So um, events like this, definitely. So also get in touch uh, on LinkedIn. And, you know, you're welcome to, to join our community. Uh, the win itself is for employees only. But the broader network and networking, networking opportunities and conversations, they happen sort of across the whole, the whole industry. Great. Okay. Thank you. And then just continuing on the theme about directors, and I've been a member of the IOD for 20 years, and it's incredible how it's still a bunch of old men. Um, it's getting a little better, but I would say it's, it's probably now... 15 to 20 percent that isn't old men. Um, 20 years ago, it was two or three percent. So it's it's moving in the right direction. But I know, and I remember when the stock exchange came out with its very clear policy on let's get at least one woman onto the board of every FTSE 350 company 
in the UK. So that's the FTSE 100, the biggest, and then the FTSE 250, the next 250 biggest. And that happened for the first time, I think, in about 2018. And then one woman left a board, and then it wasn't there. And then it happened for the second time and is still the case now that every single member of the FTSE 350 has at least woman, one woman on the board. And as Julia was saying earlier, it's improving, but it's still slow. But so now that you've achieved that goal of one woman on, on the board of every FTSE 350, what's next for the stock exchange? So it's not, it's not good enough yet. So, uh, we are, so we are continuing this work. So uh, Julia mentioned, uh, of course, the statistics. You know, it's nearly 40% now within the FTSE 100, FTSE 250. Uh, but work is not, is not done. But there is one point I wanted to make. Um, we're doing relatively well in terms of independent, non-executive board membership and participation by senior female leaders. But are we doing as well in the executive boards? What is the number of CEOs in the FTSE 100, female CEOs? Is and, it yeah. seven? Yeah, I, I think it's seven or eight. Yeah, so, yeah. but it's not a lot. Um, and that is, that is, I think, where female founders come in because you are all the pipeline for the mm -hmm. next female you know, CEOs. Mm -hmm. Um, you may choose to stay private or you may choose to exit through the public markets or you may choose to stay on and bring, you know, get your um, uh, uh, company listed and just stay on as CEO, you know, all of those things. Um, uh, but it's very important for the industry to stay laser focused on the executive yep. roles for women. Yep. I think where the balance sheet responsibility, <laughs> strategic decisions and all of that, all of the decisions, the major decisions about companies are made. Absolutely. I've asked you my two questions. You've got okay. one more. Okay. <laughs> so now to the main go. I remember it. I don't need to read it. Um, so your next book that next you book, tease yes. um, in the morning, uh, uh, Funded Female Founders. Uh, you've done some significant research I have. for that. Yeah. And so are there, were there any surprises? What are some of the things you wanted to highlight in that research? <sighs> yeah. So during the writing process, I interviewed probably 25 female founders from around the world. Um, and I initially wrote it and thought, OK, this is cool. And then I spoke with uh, the woman who's going to write the forward. Um, where's, oh, is Olivia gone? Oh, there's Olivia. Yeah. Uh, so uh, have any, who in the audience has heard of a lady called Cindy Gallup? Cindy Gallup's writing the forward to my next book. Uh, Cindy Gallup has written the foreword to my next book, in fact. Um, I got it through last week. Um, but the really cool thing was in May of last year, I got onto a call with Cindy and asked her to write the foreword and told her the story of the book. And she looked at me and she said, that's not enough. You're, you're, you're thinking far too small. You've got to think much, much bigger than that. You've got to start thinking, you know, you, you're talking about this. You, you talk about Emmeline Pankhurst and it took her 25 years. You've got to be looking at a 25 year horizon. And, and that kind of did my head in. Um, and so I, I, I went on holiday. I'm, I, I'm originally from Canada, hence the funny accent. Um, and I went back to Canada for a, a, an extended holiday last summer. And I just took time and thought. And then I came back and I had a call with my publisher. Unfortunately, she's had to leave. Uh, but I had a really good call with Lucy, my publisher, and we just talked through what were the issues, where was it going. And then Lucy said, just go out and interview more people and get there. Because I was sort of thinking, God, this is all on me. And, 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 and clearly it's not. And you know, <laughs> we've had so many people talking about reaching out for help, and I've talked about it. And yet, when I was writing my own book, I was thinking, God, I've got to do it all myself. Um, so I reached out and spoke to more people and, and, and had some fantastic conversations. And that really opened my mind. Um, and I've, I've had tremendous feedback. I've had uh, six beta readers. Uh, several of them are in the audience. Um, I won't identify them, but uh, well, Julie, uh, uh, Olivia's already said she's one, but that's fine. Um, and they've really helped me to shape the way the book is. The feedback that I got from them led to some quite significant structural changes because as much as I'm coming from this as a champion of female founders, I'm still a guy. 
and and my brain is wired differently. I'm 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 so much more open-minded than so many other men. I'd like to think, but but um, I was still looking at it through the wrong lens. And so the fact that I had six women as the beta readers for my book was immensely powerful because they helped me to refocus my lens and they helped me to make it a much it, not not to lose any of the ambition of the book but to make it a much more all encompassing story and i'm super excited about it um my publisher is super excited about it she gave me a a, a, a wonderful comment in fact angela can i have my phone <laughs> lucy's not here so I'm, she won't get embarrassed by this You sold it, didn't you? I sold it. It's gone. <laughs> Thank you. So, Lucy said, uh, it's just one sentence, but... Uh, I love how you just left the stage, David. This is not a done thing. No, well, you know. <laughs> I've moderated Lucy, many panels, but this is the first time. here we go. <laughs> here we go. So, so, so Lucy said, and, and, and she admits... She's my publisher, so she is biased, but she's also tough. Um, she said, you've created a beautifully structured, fluently written, brilliantly researched, and overall inspirational book that I'm thrilled to have supported and soon published. I'm balanced between fury and hope. Yeah. So yeah. I think that was pretty cool. I think I think fury is the key word here. Isn't yeah, no, it? fury is. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the sense of anger and annoyance, you know, all those words we have been talking about today and just channeling that energy into changing the system around us, I think is so important. Um, and I think a lot of the things that you said about having the sort of male lens, uh, what, what we are trying within our network is educating our male colleagues so, and it's not necessarily being confrontational, yeah. but it's raising the issues, it's talking about things. It's, it is also um, educating them about the some of the struggles that, that we may have. I find one thing that's really, and a few people already mentioned about this during, during the discussions today, are microaggressions or micro points or micro challenges that are specifically targeted at women, especially women of color. Yep. And by the way, I want to talk about there is a there is a whole new bias when you are a woman of color. Oh my God! Yeah, don't like. Yeah, I'm just going to jump in yeah, here. So there yeah. was an article published by <clears throat> Extend Ventures, and they looked at black women in the UK in the decade from 2009 until 2019. Ten black women successfully raised funding, 10 in a decade. That is just scandalous. Yeah. And it's moving on, it's improving. Companies like Paula Groves' business, Impact X Capital, that specifically invest in, in um, founders from, uh, from, well, in fact, their firm is, I mean, they have a wide lens, but they're, they're particularly focused on black founders. And, you know, there's other funds springing up that are focusing on those things, and, and, and that's so important. We need to continue that going because, yeah, why? You know, you, 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 look at the, you look at the racial makeup of the UK. Why are so many people not getting access to funding? It's just, it's just wrong. It's just wrong. Yeah. And it's not just the funding. My daily microaggressions, daily challenges, you know. And uh, I, I spoke at an event yesterday, and, you know, there was one, one um, uh, senior black woman there. And she said she came to meet the CEO of a company. She's very senior as well. So she came to meet, talk about a business deal. And, you know, at the reception desk, she was asked, you know, who are you? Are you sure you're here to see Simon? Oh, yes. Yeah. Where, where are you from? Yeah. What is your are you you know, the job? Are you, are you the secretary? Is the, you know, what is your job? Look, these things. And, and I think what really, what I hear as well from the experience of female founders is that that experience of dealing with rejection, daily rejection, it actually powers you. It actually teaches you to, to deal with other things that are basically happening in the broader context. Yep. So I think, I think that's really important. But it's, I think it's important to continue talking about this. Well, one, one of the articles yeah. that I found in my research was um, <clears throat> of a woman in Australia who uh, success, successfully secured um, funding 
uh, they agreed the term sheet. And as the investor was about to sign the term sheet, he said, you will sleep with me, won't you? Oh, no. She didn't sign the term sheet. Of course, yeah. This still yeah. happens. You know, it's, it's I mean, it, yeah. it's unbelievable. Yeah. It's unbelievable that that kind of stuff still happens yeah. in, in 2022, although we're seeing some unbelievable things happening in 2022. Well, so, yeah. but yeah, no, that has to change. And, and that has to be called out. That has to be, you know, that's just, yeah, that has to be called out. Uh, it's just disgraceful. And I find that when, you know, when you find your tribe, you know, um, as, as Sarah, you said, and I keep coming back to what you said as well. So when, when you find your tribe, you have this all or a peer to peer, you know, you know, mentoring group, you have the safe space to talk about these things. So it's not, again, it's, by the way, it is exhausting to be confrontational yeah. and it's exhausting to call things out yeah. for a woman, trust me. And you get labeled as a difficult woman or whatever. <laughs> Um, so, so finding that that safe space to talk about these things and yep. supporting each other, I yep. think it's really important. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. We've got time for a couple of questions. So here's one here, uh, Jacob. Have we got your mic? I've got a loud voice. Okay, go for it. <laughs> um, can I be stereotypically uh, female Fire and away. practical? If that's please. Um, I just had like two minutes outside and met a woman and we were talking about businesses and I just I would love to meet every woman here and I know we've got some networking but is there a way we can exchange the delegate list a bit about our businesses I've got to be careful because of GDPR regulations I can't just broad I I, I know I know <laughs> I'll, I'll we'll look into it hang on there's someone behind uh, about to say something so yeah no I understand thank you Thank a simple you. way of doing that would be in your chocolate for people to put their business card. Yeah. And everybody who puts their business card in there, they can share the Okay, list. perfect. Let's do that. Great. Okay, perfect point. Sarah. Um, I don't have one. I'm mad as well. So, okay. Um, I wanted to um, pick on, on uh, Ishiba's point about co founders. Have you seen any um, kind of correlation between. Um, Solo founders and success or lack of success as opposed to co founding teams? So, again, this came up in the research um, and in a lot of cases, and, and I'm not saying it's right, but it's happening, uh, women are finding that when they're going out doing fundraising, if they have a male co founder, it's a lot easier. The problem is that those male co founders get all the questions asked yep. and the women get ignored. Yep. And, and I mean, again, it's, it's totally wrong. And one, one of the people I was interviewing said to me, uh, if I, I'm going to, I'll, I'll mention two. So one of them said to me, she was at a networking event and she spoke to this male investor and he completely blanked her. And then later on, she was speaking to someone whom he rated. And so he walked over to her and he said, oh, I want to know more about you. Tell me what your husband does. And, you and, and the other one, the other one was saying, um, you know, she she actually went to an angel event, not one of yours, um, but she went to an angel event and was presenting together with a, a business partner, not a co-founder. So I'm, I'm kind of digressing from your question, but but I think it's linked. Um, she was presenting with a business partner who was a man and the investor was asking him all the questions. And he actually had to say, you've got to speak to her because I'm using her technology. Um, so, so, so there's there's pros the key, and, David, there's the pros key, and cons yeah. to having co-founders, also having female co-founders. I, in my opinion, it's a good thing because you're spreading the load, and particularly when you're at a very early stage in a business, if you're the only person leading the business, it's a very lonely place. And you know, you might bring on a few employees, and then, as Bente said, things turn down, and you got to fire one or two or whatever. Um, if you've got someone that you can share that load with, just for the, 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 the emotional and mental balance that that brings to your life, I would say do it. Um, but you've got to look at, 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 at how the balance between the, the two founders works uh, when they come in. But the key thing that you said, you know, that, that the male co-founder said, actually, why yeah. don't you ask her? I think that's very important. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's yeah. the behavior that needs to be exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I think yeah. you had the next uh, question. Uh, we've got time for one more. Hi, I'm Sally Hi. Solomon Tash. This is about funding focus. And the whole world wants to use technology. 
to move forward for all the initiatives. Yeah. I'm a technology person, and I cannot find a single penny for advancement of software technology. Why is that, and how can we address that? Wow. And where is this stat coming from? Uh, I, well, I think this is coming from, from your own experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you live in Basel, Switzerland. Um, I lived in Switzerland for six years. Switzerland is a, um, is uh, a global issue. Yeah, no, it is a global issue. No, I know it is. I know it is. But Switzerland's a particularly challenging one. Um, I think you've got to you've got to listen to what the people here said, and you've just got to keep at it. You've got to keep at it. You've got to keep at it. You know, go and find some accelerator things. Go and find other networking things. Go and find other people to talk to. Don't give up. Hold fast to your vision and your dream, and just keep going. That's the most important thing you can do. Thank you. Okay. Just one last comment from Ishmael. Very yeah. quick. Um, so in places like Israel, they're very encouraging of female entrepreneurs yep. having kids. Yeah. Right. It's very scary. Sorry, they're not picking up on that online. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, it's, um, I'm sure it's really scary for investors to think about investing in a 30-something-year-old woman and knowing then that she might go on maternity leave for a year. It's even scary as me as a CEO to think about that. But obviously, yeah. it, like, it upsets me all the time that I even have to think like that. What yeah. is, how are you thinking about those kind of things which are inevitable? Like in the, in the corporate world, um, you, you, you may be aware this, this has been directly addressed because for too long, um, women were not hired or not promoted because, oh, she's going to go off mm -hmm. and have a baby. Well, that's illegal now. And I think what we want to see is this actually becoming a universal approach when the biases are tackled um, to, to understand that, uh, A, it's a natural biological process and you can't discriminate on the basis of that. It's illegal. And B, um, I think the world is changing as such is that it's not just one woman having a baby, you know, and it's it's she she will have a support system around her. So it doesn't we need to ensure that women have support system around them. So it's not just the husband, it could be a single mother, but a support system. How do we support women in that? It is scary. And look, you can't really the problem with unconscious bias is that it is unconscious. Mm -hmm. And people who who put in make decisions they're not aware sometimes um, so uh, but I think the more we talk about this the, the better but also finding the uh, the great examples what I was inspired by uh, the CEO of Yahoo I don't remember her yep. name yep. who was hired when she was six months pregnant yep. um, and and that's one a big example to look up to and the CEO of, of, of Bumble who, who, yeah. who brought her kid in uh, yeah. just after she did her multi-billion dollar yeah. IPO so yeah, yeah. There's, there's things out there.